So the first thing we're looking at is the changing consumer landscape. And this is really driven by COVID. So you'll see that the first part of my presentation will really focus on understanding the impact that COVID has had both globally as well as locally and how it's really shaped and changed our mindsets as consumers. So we as Tetra Pak have sent out a survey to over 90,000 consumers, which we do every year in order to be consistent in our findings. The main purpose of the survey was to understand the top three main concerns of consumers. And you will see this is a comparison between 2019 and 2020. And what is clear and visible, you will see here, is that within 2019, there was no COVID. However, in 2020, that became majority of consumers worry. What is COVID? Well, how does it work? How do I get infected? How do I stay away from it? 64% of consumers expressed that that was their number one concern in 2020. We also saw that with this concern came new concerns. One, fake news and political media. The spiraling of news, the credibility of news became a big thing, all linked to coronavirus. Environmental issues as well as economic issues also quickly rose to the top of consumers' concerns. What we also saw, the biggest change between 2019 and 2020, was other health issues, where it moved from being in second position in 2019 to being only 15% of consumers' concern in 2020 being overridden once again by coronavirus issues. However, if we now take a closer look within South Africa, we can also now see that COVID has had a huge impact. These are just some of the key elements that we've seen that have been the major concerns. One was the rise of mental illness driven by a number of factors which are interlinked. So what we saw is that with school closures and university closures, Parents had to become teachers, they had to learn patience, and they once again went back to school where they had not been for many, many years. And this resulted in a lot of pressure and a lot of stress. But further to that, it actually resulted in many young children losing their hot meal for the day. As you know, in many schools in South Africa, government feeding scheme is prominent, especially in the lower end communities. This had a huge impact. The second thing that we really also saw starting to come through was the gender-based violence. We saw the numbers increasing in cases reported on violence towards children as well as women. We also saw the health facilities take a lot of strain in many, many ways. One, they did not have enough beds to accommodate the number of cases that were coming in. Secondly, the staff was not very well equipped at the beginning of COVID-19 in order to treat the cases. And thirdly, they did not have the equipment in order to treat the patients, such as oxygen. This has led in some of the patients being turned away due to lack of beds and ability to serve them. And the biggest thing that we saw was unemployment. SMEs, small business enterprises, were greatly affected by this. We saw a lot of business closures. We saw a lot of loss of jobs. We also saw big global organizations restructuring because they were unable to keep their staff based on the outcome that they were getting from businesses in general. So within South Africa and Southern Africa as a whole, food safety is Africa's primary concern and challenge. And it's not only the food safety that we're worried about, it's also food security being able to source food and put food on the table, worrying about hygiene and the conditions in which the food is being prepared. One third of consumers actually believe that COVID was a real threat to society, which ranked at the same level as food safety being the major concern for society. We know that this number has increased with COVID due to loss of jobs and families not being able to food, uh, put food on their table. We also see here that majority of consumers now believe that food safety is not just a South African concern, but a global concern. And we see that the lockdown has brought some environmental important issues, which also need to be maintained and has been brought to the surface. Food safety has been, uh, in the past year, a big concern for consumers, uh, very much uh, driven by uh, COVID. But of course, food safety has always been uh, really key for consumers. But now I'm going to uh, show you another dimension which uh, came very strongly from our uh, index, which is the environment. 
which still remains a top priority for respondents. And it's also a big concern across society all over the world. And here, it really means we've got a dual challenge that the food industry has to face, as on the one side, the public wants to have uh, food that is safe, and of course, uh, as uh, uh, we was presenting, this is uh, of course an increasingly important priority. But on the other side, the public also care about societal sustainability and protection of the planet. While it's true mm, that the pandemic has pushed the environment down the list of the global concern, it still remains ahead of everything else, even the economic issues, uh, at least from, let's say, globally in the nine markets that we have analyzed. We've seen from our Tetra Pak Consumer Environmental Trend Report, uh, um, that is one of the sources that is supporting our index, uh, that 78% of all consumers say that they are concerned about the environment. This data point is consistent also with Ipsos research, showing that even in the midst of a global pandemic, consumers are still worried about environmental disasters. The data from Ipsos highlights that 67% of consumers believe that urgent actions need to be taken in order to reduce our impact on the planet. We do recognize that all over the world, uh, actions have been taken at all levels. In Europe, for example, which is where I'm, I'm living, the European Green Recovery Alliance, which is an initiative that has been driven by the European Parliament, works to ensure that actions against climate change, but also actions to preserve biodiversity, are moved forward. Of course, depending on the market context, there might be different forces pushing for stronger environmental actions, being them governments through new legislations or manufacturers or retailers, like, for example, could be the case also for South Africa or even consumers.